All right, folks, it's Florida Deer. We're gonna get this 200 hour maintenance video started right now. Okay, maybe 201.5 hour maintenance. Hey folks, so this is what we're gonna be working on for the 200 hour maintenance. We're gonna be replacing the oil, oil filter, engine, the transmission fluid or the hydraulic fluid plus the filter. Now, I actually have closer to four gallons because of the third SC, SBC, or S, CV, S, CV, selective control valve. And then the filters, air filters, this one, and the outer one, this is the, the inner one, which is the little blue one. And I'll get into the outer one in a minute. There's, they're different depending on what year, 1023 you have. And then also, since it's every two years, which is pretty close to 200 hours. I'm gonna do the cool guard for the radiator. I'll be under a little over or whatever. It'll be close enough that I'm gonna throw that in. And then same thing with these. These are, these are the fuel filters. You're looking at every 400 hours on these. I'm just gonna throw them in for the 200 hours. So then other than the basic maintenance that I went over in the other video that I did not too long ago, this is the scheduled maintenance. So I'm just gonna do the same scheduled maintenance every 200 hours, all this stuff make it easy and then the base all right we're going to start off with the simple stuff the filter change and the oil change as well i think deer could come up with a better hood arrangement than this little side pin thing I'll raise the hood and then take these little things out and there's a little spot right here that i put them in that one broke, they're supposed to stay there, but, and I actually got new ones, but I can't figure out how to get the new ones in, so. Definitely time for a new filter. Wow, look at that sucker. It's clean on the inside though. Plus there's this one. That's still pretty clean. perfectly clean this one's the new one this one's the the old one as you can see thinking i don't know how well you can see but this one's the new one despite me checking today they still don't have the outer filter yet so we'll just put that on for now we may not even run the tracker until we get that new one on it's a pretty good chance that we'll just leave that thing off but just in case we run it it's there that's done so for this job you'll just need a 17 millimeter socket or wrench to loosen the oil pan nut and you'll be on your way to doing what I'm doing right now, which is just dropping the oil out of the bottom of the tr of the uh, engine. Here's a better view of the drain plug area. It's pretty well opened up, easy to get to. Plenty of ground clearance here. Just letting the drips out. There was plenty left in there. So this is a little over three quarts and it's supposed to be 2.9 in the crank case with the, uh, with the uh, filter, which we're gonna do next. So here we're just taking off the oil filter and it, is it me or do other people end up, you know, making the thing too tight and then you're trying to, you know, not not allow it to 
leak, so you just kind of make it a little too maybe, you know, one hand tight. So, you know, I had to grab the pliers here to yank that thing off. I took off a Fran filter, so we'll be putting on a JD filter. So. So at this point in time, I'm just putting the little ring of oil around the seal on the oil filter and then we'll just do it hand tight and then hopefully it won't be quite that tight the next time I go to do the oil change in the next 200 hours. There, but It's on, the plug's on, it's tight, all of them are tight so we'll take this off and we'll go get a proper sized, oops, proper sized funnel and go from there. So this is the top of the valve cover fill plug. There's actually another fill plug about halfway down the engine. I guess these Yanmars just have different applications. So you pretty much ignore that other fill plug basically in its entire life and just use this one to fill up the oil. And I think this one's about a lot easier. The other ones are harder to get to at least on this particular application, but there's probably other ones that, you know, that, that side entry point probably makes a lot of sense. So the next thing I'm going to do is the water separator or fuel filter. It's, I guess I could be wrong. I don't know if it's that's interchangeable. There is a fuel filter, an inline fuel filter on the other side, but this is the uh, one that comes off on this side, I believe it's to separate water from the fuel. And I think these things are always messy. Oh, one thing, not a bad idea, is to actually hit the fuel shut off. And I'm wondering if I'm going the right way. Seems to be a lot less resistance this way. Good to take it off, you know, when it's in a different direction than I'm normally familiar with. I just, uh, I don't do very good with that. Uh, so, I'm trying to catch most of that. Keep it in there. Of course, the filter stays there. Of course, if the filter drops out, then it displaces more of the fuel, so then you have more of a mess. So if you can wiggle it out gently. Well, hmm. Oh, geez. Yeah, so. Uh, let's see. Hopefully that will stay there. No, that's not going to stay there. I'm trying to drain this filter out. That's good enough. So there is a spring there that keeps that filter on there. So just make sure if you do take that off that you put the, the spring that goes back on. And then we can... Get the threads going, obviously, in the correct direction this time, first time, but then also trying to get them to thread. I'm always concerned about this part. Just, uh, a pain. Let's see, I think I'm on, but yes, I'm on. as tight as she needs to be. Then you can turn the fuel back on and then you can actually, you see the new fuel go in there. And it stops, that should be good. We should be able to start that up as well. We'll check it out.
This part is, if it's not obvious, my least favorite part of the maintenance program. And it's not that this is hard to get to it at all, it's right up under the fender pan. But the way they have it organized is there's very little uh, flexible space on either side of the filter. So there's, it's really hard to get a filter out of there and plug a filter in without doing what I've done here, at least the, to the best of my knowledge. And it's just one of those things, it's just probably it's best if you almost run the tractor out of fuel or you and then you just drain the rest of it out and probably that would be the best way to do it maybe um, but it as you can see I'm losing a fair amount of diesel fluid it's there's a catch pan there but it's really going on the floor and on my shirt so uh, it's really kind of a just a giant mess so anyways this is the least favorite part of the whole maintenance program If anybody knows of a better way to do this part of the maintenance, please let me know. So I did say I'd update you guys on the switch out filter. And we already did the inner. This was the outer. I hadn't really run the tractor hardly at all. But here's the, this is the old one. And here's the new one. I would say that I got my money's worth out of that old filter. Probably too much money's worth, maybe. Probably should do it more often than once every 200 hours. So, I'll stick that sucker in. They just slide on to each other. Oops, I left a... And that should be good enough. And this thing just goes on and then rotates like that. Wait, no, 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 exactly. Okay. Well, I'm gonna have to do this with two hands. You get the idea, though. Okay, we're gonna change out the cool guard next. Best way to do that is to take out their screen. Okay, and then at the bottom there, you can see the little bib or the outlet right there in the center of the screen. I'll put it in the center of the screen. We're going to go ahead and loosen that up and put a little catch pan underneath and see if we can get this thing going. So we've got the radiator cap off plus the the reserve or reservoir and then we have that open down there. Of course it's spilled there. It does have the little, I don't know if you can see that little hose right there. You can see the little hose it's coming out of. It doesn't work great because it comes out super slow and it has come out all over the place. As you can see, the drip there, some stuff there. I guess it's, I'm just gonna have to be patient. Uh, if you take the that bib out or whatever you wanna call that, the check valve or something, if you take it all the way out, it just flows out of there there's a big hole, but there's supposed to be like a groove that I guess allows it to come out a little easier. So I don't know, we'll see what to do. Okay, we've taken everything out. Now we're just gonna put the new stuff back in. Or put the new stuff in. The old stuff is out. I'm not putting anything back in. And this is already, I can't remember if this is already diluted or I diluted it myself, but it is in the diluted container. So at one time I did get diluted. The diluted stuff is a little bit more, so it's better to get the concentrate if you want to save a couple bucks. We should be getting pretty close to the top here.
Oh, there we go. Hey folks, just to follow up on that last clip that you saw, I did put the radiator cap on the radiator, so that did get done. And I appreciate you watching this part one of a two-part series on the 200-hour maintenance for the John Deere 1 series. So we got mostly everything done except for the hydraulic fluid change and filter, as well as the front axle. We will do that in the next video. And I hope this was helpful if you're if this is coming up or you're you know going to eventually keep the tractor long enough to, to get to this maintenance, uh, the schedule maintenance part. And in any case, if you like the video, hit the like button. And if you wanted to see more videos like it with the John Deere 1 Series or my garden tractors, then you can hit the subscribe button as well. I appreciate it. And you can do that by hitting the button up here in the left hand corner. And also there's a couple other videos too you might want to watch. Again, thanks for watching.